Good evening, everyone. It is December 20th, and I am three and a half days out now from receiving my COVID-19 vaccine. As a quick reminder, I received the Pfizer vaccine, and I am due for my second dose on January 7th. I'm doing fine. I have no issues. Um, I wanted to just let you guys know that I'm fine. Um, I've had no reactions. My arm is, it's not even sore anymore. The soreness lasted maybe eight hours, um, but it was no big deal. And I'm at my baseline. So tonight I'm going to answer some questions that I have received since my last video. And I also want to dispel some myths. So what we're gonna do tonight is I actually wanna start with kind of the basics of SARS-CoV-2, the virus and how it works. And then we'll talk about how the vaccine works and then how those two fit together. So the COVID-19 is a virus and any virus or bacteria, um, their whole goal in life is to live, to find a host, whether it's a human, an animal, a plant, etc., that will feed and nourish them and help keep them alive and will also help them reproduce. So for the SARS-CoV-2 virus, humans are the host. We are basically what is nourishing the virus and what is helping it propagate. And the way that the COVID-19 virus works, and this is a very simple explanation, is it has what is called an M pr protein spike. And what the spike does is when the virus gets into our body or your body, it tries to hook on to your cells, the cells that make up you, that make you you. And once the um, COVID-19 virus is able to hook onto your cells, then it can reproduce and spread itself throughout your body. You start getting symptoms, etc. So most scientists believe that if COVID-19 hooks and stays really well attached to your own cells, you become more symptomatic. If it just latches on and falls off or doesn't get a good latch, then those are the people that we tend to think of as asymptomatic carriers. They have the disease, but really aren't affected by it. So that M protein spike is really important because that is what is creating this binding system for the virus to bind to your cells, okay? Now, these mRNA vaccines, what they do is they've created a recipe, if you will. And the recipe says, this is how, this is what a M protein spike looks like. And by the way, that M protein spike, that's foreign and we don't like it. Okay, so that's what the vaccine does. So when you give the vaccine to someone, it goes to your cells and it says, hey, look, I got this recipe and it is how to make an M protein spike. But your body is so smart. Your body is like, no, no, that's foreign. That's bad. We don't want that. So your, your cells have this recipe so they make what are called antibodies against the M protein spike. So the M protein spike recipe that is given via the vaccine, that does not contain SARS-CoV-2. It just is the blueprint or the recipe for that M protein spike so it can attach to your cells. So your cells, after you've been vaccinated, your cells are like, oh, hey, I know what this is. I know it's not good. So I'm going to produce antibodies against it. So if it ever comes and tries to like attach to our cells, 
we're ready to fight. So then if you are exposed to COVID-19, you have those antibodies in that blueprint, they're already ready to go and they can fight and they can prevent the COVID-19 virus from attaching to your cells, which means it prevents you from getting sick. So that's a long explanation to say that the vaccine is not taking RNA and putting it in your DNA and making a new you. That is not what is happening. The mRNA is a carrier and it's giving this message, this recipe, this blueprint, like, hey, here's how to make something to fight against the M protein spike. Here it is. And as soon as it's delivered to your cells, that mRNA, it's kind of unstable and it just goes away. So there's no need to worry about this mRNA incorporated into your DNA. That is a hundred percent myth. We have also used antibodies as a treatment for people with COVID-19 infections. So there are some prominent politicians that received what is called Regeneron. Regeneron's the company, but they have produced an antibody cocktail to help combat the disease. So there's another one also called Lily. Um, again, Lily and Regeneron are the names of the companies that made these antibodies. So there's a polyclonal antibody and a monoclonal antibody. And what that is, is infusing antibodies into people so when they're sick, their body gets sent and just kind of gives them an extra boost to help them fight the disease. This is also, if anyone remembers, um, it was a really big push at the start of the pandemic. I see it less on TV and commercials now, but they were asking people who had gotten COVID-19 and had recovered, they were asking them to donate their plasma. And what they were doing, they were taking the antibodies from people that had gotten infected and recovered and they were infusing them into sick people to help them, to give them that extra boost of antibodies. So what this vaccine is doing is instead of getting external antibodies and injecting them into someone or infusing them into someone, we are just giving your body the blueprint to make your own instead of having to get it from somebody else. That brings up another question. Should you get the vaccine if you have already had COVID-19? Yes. Why? Because if you have had COVID-19 and your body produced these antibodies and fought the virus off and you did fine and recovered, that is fantastic. However, we are seeing that the antibodies that your body produces on its own just from the infection are great, but they are only kind of lasting about 90 days. So you have this like 90 day window of protection from COVID-19 However, people who had the disease in March are being reinfected in November. So you are not fully protected against COVID-19, even though you've already had it. Unlike something like chicken pox, where you get chicken pox once and you're done. Like you don't get it again. Um, COVID-19 is not like that. The studies have also shown that the immune response that people's bodies are creating and the antibodies they're making against COVID-19 last longer than the 90 days that we see once you have the vaccine and the response is more robust. So that is why even if you've had the virus, you should still get vaccinated. 
The other question is when? Current recommendations say you can get vaccinated after you've had COVID-19. You can get vaccinated as soon as you are symptom free. You just have to have resolved your symptoms. Now, since you do have that kind of 90 day window of protection after having the virus, some places are suggesting that you wait 90 days and then you get your vaccine. I personally don't think it matters. And at my hospital, our recommendation is as soon as you're symptom free, we're not waiting for that 90 day mark to hit before allowing someone to get vaccinated. There's been some other concerns about fertility and reproduction. I'm of childbearing age. I got the vaccine, if that says enough. I am friends with a few pregnant healthcare workers. And after speaking to their OBGYNs, they have opted to receive the vaccine. And also during the clinical trials for um, the vaccines, 23 women actually got pregnant sometime during the clinical study. Um, it has not been um, nine months, obviously, since the study started. However, for the women that were in the study, got at least the first dose and then got pregnant, it didn't affect their fertility. You have to agree to use birth control um, to be on clinical studies. So I don't know what happened there, but 23 women got pregnant while in the clinical trial. Another concern that I have seen is that people believe that Moderna is new to the medical industry, and that is simply not true. Moderna was, and maybe still is, working on a vaccine for Zika virus. Um, they have been working on that since at least 2017. I honestly did not look to see where in the process of approval or what stage they are in terms of trials for the Zika vaccine. Obviously, Zika has, is not a concern right now. Um, but they are definitely not new to the medical industry. Pfizer has been around for a long time. Pfizer is also the makers of Viagra. So if you can trust your penis to Pfizer, why not trust your health? So I hope that this has been informative and that I've answered some of your questions about COVID-19 as a virus and COVID-19 vaccine. I hope everyone has now a little basic understanding of how the virus works and how the vaccine works and understand how it is efficacious and also why it is safe. And as always, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys may have, so please keep them coming. Please everyone just stay safe, keep wearing your masks, practice social responsibility, keep washing your hands regardless of COVID. You should just always wash your hands and stay safe, enjoy the holidays, and let me know if you have any questions. Again, I am three and a half days out from my vaccine. I feel great. My next and final one is scheduled for January 7th. So I will definitely make a video um, before, during, and after again to document the process. And um, I'm here if you guys have questions. So have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and I will see you guys soon.